Welcome to Southland Marahiku in New Zealand's Deep South, a region renowned for its unmatched beauty. This week it provides a natural playground for New Zealand's best road cyclists in the 67th edition of the SBS Bank Tour of Southland. Over seven days we will see all the South has to offer, starting and finishing in Invercargill, a city transforming for the future. Through fertile farmland, the rugged south coast, the beauty of Fiordland and the majestic remarkables in Queenstown. All to push the country's top road cyclists to their absolute limit. 114 riders, 19 teams, over 860 kilometres and just one winner. This is the 2023 SBS Bank Tour of Southland. The first pedal strokes of this year's tour saw the race begin in brilliant, calm, sunny conditions on Sunday, with the opening team's time trial prologue, followed by stage one, a 10 lap blast for 42 kilometres around Queen's Park in central Invercargill. Quality Food Services Southland took advantage of the benign weather, taking first blood, winning the team's prologue by just two seconds. Remarkably, the top 10 teams finished within nine seconds of each other. That put Boris Clark into the first tour leader's orange jersey. But that was merely the day's entree, as the field lined up just hours later for stage one's punch around the park. It was fast and frantic right from the start, with several unsuccessful attacks from riders attempting to get away from a peloton that was stretched but kept the main bunch together for most of the stage. That meant it all came down to who positioned themselves best for the final lap to the finish. And as the bell sounded for the 10th and final circuit, a tour debutant made his move to set up a frantic finish to day one. So 4.2 kilometres is all that remains for this afternoon stage and it's the man from Otago, James Gardner in his first ever tour. This is a young man, Doug, who's just come off winning the Yunker Junior Tour here and I can tell you the conditions then were a complete opposite to today's fine blue skies. Yeah, just a fantastic day to be out watching a bike race here like the SBS Bank Tour of Southland for all the public of Invercargill. A wonderful spectacle. James Gardner is building and building on his reputation. This boy is an incredibly strong land. He doesn't look like an 18-year-old boy by any means. He is seriously down to his work. He has taken a wee peek here and there, having a look back, but he is committed to this, and he is really, really doing everything he can to try and stay away from that chasing group. If the TAB were offering odds here, I tell you what, they would be pretty short odds when it comes to Gardner because we have seen him do this time and time again when it comes to racing. Particularly in the last month, this young man here has got a lot of great placings, results over the memorial races. But Doug, this is a big step up when you come to an international tour and you've got over 112 riders chasing you. His central benchmakers, will bike teammates, will be in this group. They obviously won't be contributing to any chase, but they'll be certainly having a look down on the road at the gap that he has and it's a substantial one still he's got two or maybe three more corners of course to get round but a lone bike rider perhaps has got an advantage today the conditions are good he'll be able to corner at speed but James Gardner really really has committed here and is looking very very strong he loves his time trialling. This is a former national time trial champion in the age groups here. He's just recently returned from Colombia where he's had a track campaign where he represented New Zealand for the first time in Colombia there for the Junior World Championships where he took part in some serious racing. But this is another big step up, 900 kilometres worth of racing. And on day one, Doug, taking on the challenge of some very experienced bike riders. It's very, very gutsy. The sort of thing you would see from a young guy who's just so full of energy and full of beans. Attacking the field in the SBS Bank Tour is probably something he's dreamed about for years and years and here he is out here doing this but by crikey he is really going to be starting to ask himself some questions. This is where it starts getting really hard when you've got a group bearing down on you like this and you've been away and put in a huge amount of watts, dropped a lot of energy and staying away and you can see things back in the peloton there are starting to wind up a wee bit but James Gardner knows he's only got this corner and the final corner into the finish into Gala Street to get round and he's still got a good distance so it's still looking on for him. 
Well, of course, we've got the orange jersey, the tour leader's jersey up for grabs. There is only mere seconds covering the top half dozen teams from this morning's team time trial. So potentially, if this young man can stay off the front here, Doug, he could be putting himself in a serious position for some of the classification jerseys, and in particular, the tour leader's jersey. And look at the delay. We have not seen the peloton. They are in disarray. They are not getting organised, and that is working in the favour of the man from Otago. Yeah, those corners that he's going around here is really, really making the most of those corners as he gets around on his own. You can see there the group was just a bit more cautious. It's quite a tight corner, that second last corner. But James Gardner really has got some work. He's just under a K to go here now, and he is really, really having to knuckle down. He will not be wanting to look behind him because it is starting to really ramp up that chase. The grimace on the face. We don't often see it from James, but he knows how to put himself in the hurt box here. His coach, Chris Henderson, and co are all going to be well behind him here. They'll be watching this footage and loving every moment of it here as he comes up to the final corner to swing into the straight. It's a bit of an up here, uphill here, Doug. That can really take the sting out of the legs. Yeah, James is really just going to have to get into a gear and make it super comfortable because the sprinters in the front of this peloton are really starting to come at him. So James is really, really going to have to really knuckle down. This is tight. Big move starting to happen further back in the bunch. We can see the green jersey in there. We can see the likes of Kirkazu and Co. But I think this young man's going to do it, Doug, as he goes across the line. James Gardner, an outstanding finish for him to put himself not only first across the line, but potentially into the tour lead. What an outstanding effort from the young man from Dunedin to hold off the fast challenges from the likes of Olympians, Kirkazu, the Japanese team up there in the mix as well. But this is the young man, the face of the future of cycling here in New Zealand, who takes out his first ever tour stage at the SBS Bank Tour of Southlands. So thanks to the time bonuses midway through the stage, it is Olympian Nick Kirkazu who puts himself into the orange jersey by a mere one second from the stage victor, James Gardner. Yeah, yesterday's was always a bit of a surprise. We had a um, tactic of hitting it in that same spot, but I did it a lap early and yeah, I was really happy to stay away in the end and just beating out on the peloton of 110, 115 odd strong was pretty, yeah, I was very happy with it in the, in the finish. Um, and to have my family there and my mentor and um, a lot of the local people that have supported me over the years it was awesome yesterday. Yeah, to be a Southlander leading the tour, it's uh, real cool and especially now this is the first year of the orange jersey with SBS, I think it's just a big uh, congrats to SBS and a way to acknowledge them and to be a Southlander wearing it on day one, yeah, awesome. So riding for Central Benchmakers World Bike, there's four of us who are in the under 23 rounds and then there's um, two of the guys from Australia um, who are yeah, seasoned professionals with this sort of tour so it's awesome to have those guys there contrasting us with the experience and yeah, all four of us are looking forward to it and three of us is our first time racing so we're really looking forward to the, the week and learning a whole bunch about ourselves and how to ride the tour properly I guess. Down here helping out Oxford Edge, you know, it's always good to come back and, and give a bit of advice and, you know, weather like this, you can't complain. There's lots of stuff that happens in, in tour. I remember two years that I've won the tour, uh, I won it on the last day. Up until that point, I didn't know if I was going to win it. So you've got to be able to roll with the punches um, and be able to recover well. But of course, you've got to come into a race like this really fit. And if you do that, then you generally get through the week well. We've got four Australians, it's their, all their first tour, but they're all really experienced bike riders. And then of course, Scott, me and Keanu have been around the team for a few years now. So I think we've, uh, yeah, we've got a good mix of um, experience and I think we've got a, a, a strong team for the conditions we might face this year. We're expecting a bit of everything really. The wind will probably pick up and um, there's a little bit of a gravel section with a few um, ups and downs that will be um, key for the race. So it's about being, saving energy for then and um, yeah, using my energy when I have to. So the blue skies of Invercargill greet the riders here on day two for the official first road stage and it is the longest stage in this year's tour of 166 kilometres. Yeah, some pretty uh, happy faces there in that group. Nick Kurgazoo, Della Boisier and the brand new tour leaders orange jerseys looking pretty focused and pretty comfortable. He's been here, done this. Uh, we've seen this man do all sorts of wonderful things in New Zealand and in international cycling in the last few years. 
There's another face that we've seen a lot of in the Tour of Southland over the years, Gordon McCauley. What a campaigner. Incredible. Yeah, two-time champion of the Tour and uh, like a lot of riders, keen to come back at the age of 51 as we see looks like Hamish Keast might have a bit of a mechanical, could be doing a bit of a bike change as we see the graphics of this very long stage heading out west and southland towards Otao Town, Nightcaps and eventually across towards Balfa and into the traditional finish which is Lumsden. Yeah, the conditions do play a huge part of this stage, especially the early parts of it, which are exposed to the wind. There's Nick Kurgazoo de la Boisier in the tour leader's new orange jersey. He'll be hunting these first sprint premiums. He's always keen for that competition. But interestingly, I wonder if he's going to defend that orange jersey today. Yes, he's certainly got some choices available to himself, and there are some 18 sprints up for grabs here, 3, 2, and 1, and a few of them also, of course, offering some time bonuses, which is how he got himself into that orange jersey yesterday, as it looks like the likes of Zinovich of Invercargill for the Share the Road Macaulay 4 team doing the lead out here, but Nick waiting patiently, the track specialist coming up onto the shoulder, oh, it was a tight one there, but it looks like the judges have it awarded to him there, and he picks up a further three points early in the stage. Yeah, this, this stage really can bust up a bit if the winds um, do influence things. And you can see here the group is still very, very much together, which will certainly help a lot of the riders just wanting to hang on further down in the group. But the start of this race is so incredibly tough. And this is where the breakaways do form. And you can see here once again the preems that the sprinters are actually going for for the sprint points do form some of those breakaways. So this is going to be an interesting start to the stage. Here's Copeland's getting up there in the mix as Kirkazoo starts to come up onto the shoulder and it could be a bit of a, the old track craft here to throw the bike to the line as they go for the third sprint on the road and it's Kirkazoo who receives the, the points for himself over Daniel Bridgewater. These two have gone head to head, remember of course only 12 months ago when it came to this tour. We could be in for a great battle this week. The sprint preems in these early stages do have a huge bearing on that Harcourt sprint classification and you can see the riders are so hungry for these early sprint points as they go along. The, some of the sprints are quite close together but you can see here again Nick Kugazu de la Boisier, he is really hunting these points early on in the stage. That is an impressive start for Nick. Yes, the young Southland doing a fantastic job, and we've seen this before over the last few years. Of course, he's a two-time winner of the Harcourt uh, Sprint Ace, so he knows how to do this. He knows when to position himself, and of course that track craft again, and he comes off. It's Remember Doug, just in recent times, some fantastic form, taking a stage out in China recently with some of the tour racing there. Yeah, some of the uh, preparation from some of the riders this year has been very, very targeted. A lot of them have been racing racing in Asia um, and racing national series in Australia and finishing um, campaigns in Europe early so they can get here in good form. A lot of them target this race and they know if they come in with good form, it's a good week for them. But if they come in overdone and overcooked and have really raced too much, they come in the morale can get a bit low and they just don't ping along like they should be. So this is going to be a real interesting start. Luckily, still you can see all the flax bushes and so on on the side of the road there isn't any wind so this is a really perfect start for these riders so the peloton of course are going to have to adjust the tactics with that lack of wind but for these two men they don't care they want to get themselves off the front and it's good to see on your bike 1.5 meters that's kyle gray rider 174 who's disappeared off the front here with matt wilson now They'll ignore the colours on their shoulders. They'll want to try and unify here and try and open a gap because there's been a lot of moves trying to get off the front, but difficult in these ideal conditions. Yeah, we're just coming through the nightcaps part of the stage and heading over on their way across the Southland Plains. And the leaders, the two leaders, are now getting swallowed up by another couple of chasing riders here. Looks like number 141, James Cranch from Christchurch for the Southern Cross Racing Academy. Uh, they're bridging across and one of the other riders here, I just can't pick his number at the moment, but this is going to form a very, very good uh, quartet at the front. More numbers, of course, means more chance of staying away. So a combination of four riders, of course, increases the opportunity to try and stay clear as we have more men to hit the front and put the power in as they go past Ray's Bush there. And they're starting to open up a decent sort of a gap as we see a chasing group here of three to four riders, or I'd say potentially just the three, as it looks like one of the other riders now. He attempted to get there. The legs have given away, but it's the Business South team who have put two riders into it now. The numbers games could be interesting here, Doug. Yeah, that's right. That's Toby Francis, by the looks of things, from the Coop 
Scotland's boot logistics teams coming across with them as well. But it's interesting to see the motivation and, and the uh, tactics from some of these teams. They're wanting to attack this race and get their riders out the front of this year's SBS Bank Tour. So the two men here in the pink colours for Business South Doug. As we said, numbers can make a big difference, of course. One could be let to be doing a lot of the work on the front, the other could sit back. But let's think about the team manager, Danny Rush. He'll be sitting back in that van, he'll be frothing at this. Yeah. The excitement levels of the Business South team, who have performed extremely well over the years, they've got a number of the businesses around Southland. They'll be watching very closely here as they see two of the men putting themselves into a very good position. And let's not forget, with a bit of a gap here on this peloton, Doug, it's only a mere seconds. These guys are the virtual leaders on the road. Yeah, and this is where a lot of these uh, guys will start getting a wee bit anxious back in the group, wondering just how far out they're going to let them go. Remember, we've got a huge climb coming up at the Glen Ewer climb, which is a pivotal part of this year's race. You can see there, number 141, that's James Crunch from the Southern Cross Racing Academy. He's really driving this breakaway, looking really comfortable. But if these guys can get a decent enough gap, the conditions are such that it is going to be a wee bit harder for them, to, uh, a wee bit easier for them, sorry, to stay away. The group behind are going to have to really, really reel these fellas in, otherwise there's going to be some changes on the overall classifications. Yeah, they're settling into their paces now as they try and pick up a few dollars on the road, but more importantly, to try and secure a stage victory. But it's going to be a big ask here because it's a long way into the stage, 166k. There it is at 3 minutes 15. It's starting to settle into a decent sort of a gap. There's going to have to be some organisation back in the main peloton. Meanwhile, these guys here, they've got themselves sorted and are working pretty smoothly. This lead group are still away as we approach the start of the gravel portion of this year's race up the Glen Ewer Hill. This will really, really test these guys. They've been away for quite a long time and it is going to be a real test of whether they've got the legs to stay away from the chasing group. Here we are back at the front of the peloton again. They're starting to organise themselves, get into position for this gravel sector is really vital, isn't it? It absolutely is here as the time will start to tumble as they approach this very challenging part. It's close to 5k of climbing through the gravel. They're pretty pleased it's dry conditions here today, but you can see the dust flying everywhere here as they look like they're going to try and hold off this field, pick up a few more points, and then, Doug, they only enter into about 30 kilometres to go over the top. As we can see, them starting to splinter here in the main peloton, and it looks like the creation signs might a Q team. They're in the mix here. Central Benchmakers will bike. They've already taken out a stage yesterday. They're sniffing around towards the front of it as well as a lot of pre pressure goes on in the peloton. That gravel is really, really loose this year too. You can see things are quite hard with it being nice and dry. We're at the front of the group here again. The front group has split up a bit and you can see there this lead rider is taking a really very, very safe approach riding in the hardest part of the gravel without the, the loose gravel potentially causing any punches or flats. So this is a really, really tough phase of this gravel sector. He certainly picked up the pace here, and that is the man from C. Brown Builders Oldfoot Contracting, Max Campbell of Australia, rider 123, and he's sniffing himself out a few points here at the Glen Ewer climb here for the King of the Mountains, for the Jesco King of the Mountains, the polka dot jersey, and there is a few points available here today, and a lot of big climbs throughout this uh, week here, but today, early in the stage, you could get yourself potentially into the polka dot jersey. So Max Campbell from the Sea Brown Builders Ofa contracting squad has really done a good job there. That should secure him enough points uh, to perhaps take that polka dot jersey so far. Early days in the tour, but this stage and this gravel sector really has a pivotal part in the overall GC aspirations of a lot of these riders. This will be really, really starting to get tough by now. Well, based on that shot there, I think our GC aspirations are dwindling for a number of riders as the field has reduced dramatically. We had 113 riders together. It's certainly not that now as you look to about 20 odd riders and we see another group trying to get across and another bunch back further here. The gravel is doing the damage here. Yeah, once we get down off the gravel climb through the Glen Ewer and in towards Balfour, it settles down a wee bit. Here you can see here the two leaders, Max Campbell and it's Cranch from the uh, Southern Cross Racing Academy are joining back up with that remainder of the peloton, uh, that 
crested the climb 10 k's to go once again though there's riders still attacking off the front of this group and it looks like the familiar figure there of sam jenner of australia he performed extremely well last year in the tour and he's decided to head off the front i think he's been inspired by his uh, young counterpart there in his team and they're taking out the stage yesterday and trying to hold the field off as he's hit hard here doug as they make their way down on these ups and downs on the outskirts of lumsden they'll approach about 10 kilometers to go and this man is he going to try and repeat what his teammate did with a time trial effort? Yeah, Sam Jen has picked a really, really good spot to attack there from the central bench makers. Will Bike Team, a bit of a downhill stretch there, took the guys napping and has really built himself a nice lead. He's an Australian rider. He's raced extensively overseas this year and he is really looking strong at the front of this race. This is an incredible effort by this young man from Australia. He's been holding them off for the last eight to nine kilometres here, hovering around the 22nd margin over a chasing peloton here. Can he continue to do it? He's just approaching about one kilometre to go as he makes his way into the outskirts here of Lumsden. And there is the shot. They are breathing down his neck there. They are starting to make some moves, Doug. Can they capture him? Oh, the central bench makers, Will Bike team, have really come out with a strategy here. This man, Sam Jen, has just got a crest around this top corner here, and he's straight through into the finish. He'll be hoping to keep it up, hoping there's no loose gravel on that last corner. But what an astonishing ride from Sam Jenner. This boy really has put in some big efforts here to stay away from that chasing group. It's a long straight up Diana Street into Lumsden here. He is down to the last 600 metres. It will feel a lot longer that, than that for him though, for this young man as he chews on the handlebars, but potentially could take himself out of stage and that is what is inspiring him here today in the sunshine of Lumsden. No sign of the main peloton. He knows they're coming, but he's starting to have a quick look and he realises this could be victory. This could be day to a victory here for the Creation Signs Benchmakers Will Bike Team. It certainly is to the Australian Sam Jenner taking out a fantastic start stage victory and it's New Zealand representative Goff who brings home the main peloton into second place. Well that's certainly going to shake up the GC aspirations here on day two of the SBS Bank Tour of Southlands. It continues to be seriously tight at the top of the leaders board here on day two with Regan Goff, the New Zealand track star, getting himself the orange jersey after a second place in the stage from Australian Samuel Jenner and Glenn Hayden of Wanganui, five seconds adrift. Nick Kirkazoo of Southland managed to pick up a number of early points to lead in the Harcourt sprint ace. Whilst Max Campbell was proactive throughout the day and deservedly so gets the Jesco King of the Mountains with 14 points. Marshall Irwin of Southland in his first ever SBS Bank Tour of Southland now leads by two seconds over Watson Palmer and Kirkham. While Glenn Hayden is very busy with two jerseys in the classifications, the Stonewood Holmes silver jersey from Cooper and Crowther. Max Campbell was awarded the most combative after being off the front for a large part of the day. While Quality Foods Southland continue their good form, not only now with the orange jersey, but continue to lead in the Wensley's team classification. I'm super happy. It's, it's probably one of the favourite races I've done through my career. And um, yeah, I think everyone's pretty happy, especially after yesterday with um, James Gardner taking the win yesterday and then me today. And I think uh, Marshall Laird was under 23 jerseys well. So yeah, for a small team, I think we're punching well above our weight at the moment. I knew we were in with a shot with a kick, we were one of the faster guys there, but yeah, unfortunately just fell short of Sam. Um, incredible ride by him and, and yeah, he certainly defeated the odds um, today for sure. So um, hats off and, and we'll go again tomorrow. Follow the action from this historic race with live race updates, full results and pictures at touroftsouthland.com.